Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this session on uh, building models automatically with StageMaker. If you have any questions, you can submit them in the questions pane on the control panel and I will answer them at the end. You can find a copy of the slides uh, in the handout tab on the control panel as well and you will get a copy of the webinar recording in a follow-up email after the event. Okay, let's get started. Uh, as you probably know by now, SageMaker is a, a fully managed machine learning service that lets you go quickly from experimentation to production using a modular service and modular APIs. So uh, what we mean by modular is you pick whatever you like. If you really want to go from A to Z using SageMaker, that's perfectly okay. <laughs> that works uh, fine. That's what I'm going to do in the demo later on. But maybe you already have a model and you only need to deploy it on SageMaker. So that's fine. You can just call the uh, deployment API and get that done. Uh, maybe you want to train on SageMaker and deploy on your local machine. So fine, you can do that as well. Okay, so it's not a, a siloed service uh, where you have to go from A to Z and, 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 and be you know, locked in. You can really use um, whatever part of the service you like best. Okay. And well, if you look at this slide, there's a bit here that says optimization, right? Optimizing models. So uh, this is uh, one of the two things we're going to cover today, how to build models uh, and tune them automatically for the best, uh, the best performance, uh, exploring hyperparameter ranges automatically. And the second thing we're going to look at, which is even more uh, powerful, is building and tuning models completely uh, from scratch okay just provide your data set and uh, and SageMaker specifically SageMaker Autopilot will go and train and optimize that model for you okay let's get started the first thing I want to cover is model tuning uh, so how do you extract uh, as much performance as possible from your model well, I already said hyperparameters, so I, I guess I need to explain. Hyperparameters are um, training parameters, okay? Algorithm parameters that uh, that you need to uh, to set. So um, if you work with XGBoost, which is what I'm going to use in my demo, a popular open source algo, you have plenty of hyperparameters such as tree depth, max leaf nodes, and then really weird ones like gamma, lambda, alpha, and uh, well, all of them uh, have an influence on, uh, on the outcome. So you can't just go and set them at random, right? Um, and it's not always easy to understand which ones are the really important ones. So maybe, you know, the few ones that you should really look at and the other ones which should just uh, use default values. If you work with neural networks, uh, you know, it's probably worse because uh, how many layers do you need? How wide should these, should these layers be? Um, what's the learning rate for your job? And if you use embeddings uh, for uh, maybe natural language processing, you have so many extra parameters to worry about. And of course, the combinations get crazy. So there's no way you're going to be able to explore all of it. And the chance is that you're going to train that one golden job with the right set of hyperparameters is very, very slim. So we need to have uh, a proper... Um, strategy to find those hyperparameters. Okay, so before we talk about that, um, let me remind you how we set hyperparameters in SageMaker. If you work with built in algos like Linear Learner or K Means or KNA, then um, you have a, a dedicated estimator for those built in algos. And the only thing you have to do is just call the set hyperparameter. Uh, API on that uh, on that estimator. Okay, you have an example here for XJBoost as well. So super simple. If you work with a built-in framework like TensorFlow, MXNet, etc., uh, then you pass uh, a Python dictionary with uh, the hyperparameters to the estimator. So if you use TensorFlow, uh, that's the example here. You will pass um, that hyperparameters Python dictionary to the TensorFlow estimator. Um, if you're using a built-in framework, you're probably using script mode as well, and uh, that's the, really the preferred way to use those frameworks. And then that means the code, so let's say the TensorFlow code that you're training here, uh, must be able to accept uh, those uh, hyperparameters as command line arguments. Okay, that's the uh, the interface between the estimator and and your code. And finally, if you use your own container. 
so anything else, okay, your own code, then um, again, the hyperparameters will be passed to the estimator as a Python dictionary. And that dictionary is going to be copied inside your container automatically as a JSON file so that your code uh, just has to read that hyperparameters.json file to grab the hyperparameters and then apply them to your own code. Okay, so it's not difficult to uh, access those hyperparameters in your code. Now let's talk about the different tactics to find the right parameters. Uh, the first one is manual search, right? AKA, I know what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna go and select those hyperparameters myself uh, and, uh, and voila, as we say. Unfortunately, um, most of us, including myself, don't really know what we're doing. And like I said before, picking hyperparameters um, just like that, you know, is not is not the the guaranteed option uh, to get uh, high performance models. Okay, it's uh, very easy to convince yourself of that. Just uh, just try it. Try to run a few training jobs, see what accuracy you get, and then try the other tactics, and you'll see that well, manual search is uh, slow and really you know you're you're really guessing more than anything else. The second option is called grid search. So grid search will split uh, the uh, hyperparameter space into uh, into different uh, areas, and it's going to explore those areas systematically. So you know, X marks the spot. Uh, if we try them all, then you know, there's a good chance we're going to hit um, the, the the area where models perform best. Uh, so that does work. Uh, unfortunately, you you end up training hundreds and hundreds of models, uh, which is slow and expensive. So you know why not? Uh, if you have very very short training job, then sure you can run a thousand or ten thousand, but even then you know it's uh, it's probably not the best option. So the third option is random search, which I call spray and pray because random is exactly that. Um, and you would say, well, how could random be more uh, efficient than grid, right? Grid search is scientific. Our random search is just, you know, we're throwing a dice. Well, yes, um, <laughs> but in fact, it does perform better. And uh, you don't have to believe me. You can read this uh, research paper by uh, Bergstra and Bengio, and uh, that's the Turing Award Bengio, if you were wondering. And they proved that this actually works better than grid search. So. Um, you just get to high performance models uh, faster and cheaper. Uh, the problem I have with random is that it's random. And uh, if I have to convince a customer that this is the way to go, uh, well, yeah, it's, uh, it's a long shot, I think. Uh, explaining that this is the model that they should deploy because you know, you're randomly selected hyperparameters, you know, that's a little uh, difficult to explain. So the fourth option, and my preferred one, is to use hyperparameter optimization, where we literally use machine learning to predict hyperparameters. So initially, we'll pick some random values, and then we'll observe uh, the results that we get from those models, and we'll apply uh, two machine learning algos called Gaussian process regression and Bayesian optimization to literally predict uh, the set of hyperparameters that should be tried next. And uh, so you know, we're not guessing, we're really uh, applying statistical analysis to decide where to look next. And this uh, will just converge faster to high performance models. So you end up training fewer models and spending less money, and that's good. If you wanna know more about those algos, we have uh, details at this URL, but again, you don't really need to understand the, the details here. Um, you can just use the API, okay? How do we use the API? Well. We create an estimator the usual way, and um, then we define the metric to, to tune on. Um, so if you use a built-in algo or built-in framework, we have predefined metrics, accuracy, area under curve, F1, that kind of thing. But if you have a custom metric in your training log, you can absolutely use it. Uh, you just have to provide a regular expression that will help SageMaker extract the actual value. Uh, so anything that is uh, logged to the training log can be used as an optimization metric, okay? The next step is to define parameter ranges to explore. So um, basically, basically, you know, 
what to look for. And then you put everything together, the estimator, the metric, the parameters, and uh, you tell SageMaker how many jobs you want to run and how many to run in parallel. Um, and you set the strategy. Bayesian is the default one and the one we recommend. But you can also use random search. And uh, customers usually do that as a baseline to see that Bayesian is actually performing better. Okay? And then you just call fit on this hyperparameter tuner. So this isn't really hard, and we'll see it in a demo uh, in a few minutes. Okay? So summing things up, this is the workflow. You start from your client. I'm going to use notebooks, but you could use your IDE or the, even the console if you wanted. Create a hyperparameter tuning job with a certain strategy, and it fires up a, a, a number of uh, initial jobs. Okay, and those jobs will uh, log metrics. Okay, so this is the accuracy, let's say, that uh, each job um, achieved with that set of hyperparameters. And then the tuning strategy will apply again. Uh, optimization to those results and predict the next set of hyperparameters that need to be explored. Okay, and it does this again and again until it has uh, hit uh, the the number of jobs that uh, you specified. Okay, and then you can see um, the metrics and of course the hyperparameters that were set for each job. Right. So while this is running, you can actually view it in the AWS console. You can, uh, you can list all the jobs, you can inspect them, you can see the best training job. Of course, you can query the job status with the SageMaker SDK, um, and you can deploy the best job simply by calling deploy on the hyperparameter tuner. So if the job is over, then this will literally deploy the best job. If the job is not over, it's going to deploy the best job so far. And that's sometimes useful because if you have very long lasting uh, tuning jobs and you still want to run some tests on the best so far, um, you can call deploy uh, and it will deploy the best so far. And if you call deploy at the end of the job, then it will deploy the, uh, the, the best one. Okay, so that could be a shortcut if you wanted to take a quick look. All right, let's do a demo. So let's quit this for a second. And let's move on to uh, this notebook. Okay, uh, so you can find this notebook on GitLab. Uh, this is the uh, this is the URL here. And uh, well, uh, it's uh, my beloved direct marketing example, which <laughs> I've used again and again. But I think it's quite simple to understand. So it's a supervised learning problem where we're trying to classify customers uh, in two classes. Uh, customers who accept a marketing offer and customers who don't okay so it's a yes or a no kind of thing okay and uh, and we're using XGBoost here to build this classifier so uh, first of all I'm just uh, updating my SDKs making sure I have the latest version for everything uh, then I download the data set okay extract it and I can see it's a CSV file so we see uh, this is the first sample okay so we have I think 20 uh, 20 features and we have a label here okay and that column is called Y and it says you know yes or no uh, did this customer accept the offer okay and we have many more no's than we have yeses Okay, so that's a CSV file. Uh, we'd rather look at it uh, using Pandas, a Swiss Army knife uh, for machine learning. So that's how, what I'm doing here, loading it in Pandas, and I can view it uh, in a more pleasant way. Okay, so all the features and that Y label at the end. Uh, the shape, so I see I have a little more than 41,000 samples and 21 columns so 20 features and the label i can count the number of uh, yeses and nos and i can see uh, the data set is unbalanced about eight to one okay so eight times more nos than yeses which makes sense because most people are not interested in that marketing offer right okay um now i need to do some simple transformations on the data set uh, I'm gonna go really quick here because uh, this isn't really the, the bulk of the of the session, but basically uh, we're removing. We have a column called P days that tells us 
when's the last time we talked to that customer and 999 is a placeholder value that says we never talked to that person so you know we need to remove that because uh 999 is not 999 days okay it's really a placeholder value that could uh, uh, fool uh, the algo into thinking this means something else so we're going to drop uh, this value and we're going to replace it with a column that says no previous contact set to one or zero um, we're going to uh, aggregate uh, low cardinality classes we see you know here for example uh, student uh, unemployed and retired are kind of low numbers here so um, and they're they don't have a job basically so uh, we could put all of them in the same category called not working so again creating a column here to kind of a cluster of those three classes uh, then I'm uh, one hot encoding all the categorical variables okay and uh, there are plenty right uh, you can see let's go up again uh, so jobs marital status education etc all these are categories so uh, I need to get rid of that and uh, and I use one hot encoding which basically creates uh, different dimensions for all these categorical variables uh, let me scroll back a bit uh, so for example we see um, the days of weeks uh, the day of weeks have become categories and the jobs have become categories etc etc okay basically creating new dimensions for uh, for all those different categories all right so now I end up having 66 columns instead of 21 okay but this is actually helping the model by understanding the different dimensions uh, of the problem okay all right uh, now I need to split the data set for training validation and testing so uh, there's a nice API in uh, NumPy to do that uh, so 70% goes to training 20% goes to uh, validation and 10% go to testing okay so now I end up having three CSV files which I upload to S3, okay? And I define their location uh, as uh, S3 prefixes because that's what I'm gonna pass to the estimator, okay? So basic pre-processing, you can, you can read the notebook again for details. But okay, now we have a data set to work with. So how do we launch that tuning job? So first, uh, I'm going to create my estimator, okay? So I'm going to grab the name of the XJBoost container for the uh, region I'm running in, okay? So this container parameter is uh, really a Docker image name now. And I'm going to create my estimator. So uh, I'm passing the container, okay, uh, the role, so, uh, so that SageMaker can uh, um, access S3 and, and pull the container and do some other things. I'm passing some information on um, the data, right? I want to use file input mode. So basically I want to copy the data set to the training instance. Uh, the alternative would be pipe mode, which would stream data, but this is a really tiny data set. So streaming doesn't make sense. Uh, this is where to save the model. This is how much infrastructure I want to train on. So one M4 Excel. Uh, and I want to use a spot instance to save some money so I also enable spot instances here okay and this is a good way to save well 60 to 70 percent as we'll see so basically say hey I want to use spot uh, my job should not run for more than five minutes it's a very slow uh, very small one <laughs> so very fast one actually and I don't want to wait for more than 600 seconds four spot instances plus uh, the actual training time okay so this parameter lets you specify how long you're ready to wait for spot instances basically okay uh, i set some basic hyper parameters okay uh, the static ones i should say the the one that says hey uh, i just want to uh, build a classification model and i want to train for 100 rounds and that's about it okay uh, so you can set some static ones like that and then of course you can set the ones that you want to explore so here i want to explore eta mean child weight alpha and max depth okay 
So uh, two of them are um, um, floating point values uh, between 0 and 1 or between uh, 1 and 10 or th 3, sorry, and this one between 0 and 2. And uh, this one is an integer, okay? So uh, you can have uh, uh, basically continuous parameters, integer parameters, or categorical uh, parameters, but we don't recommend those. Uh, they tend to make optimization a little more difficult. All right. Okay, so these are the ranges I want to explore. So you could say, well, how do we know ETA should be between 0 and 1? Well, some of these parameters are um, by default, you know, they have a range. So ETA by default is between 0 and 1. So you know, there's no guessing what to explore. Um, for other parameters, you can come up with reasonable ranges. So uh, the, the SageMaker documentation will actually point you at that, uh, and then literature as well. So um, it's difficult to find the right parameters, but it's not too difficult to find the right ranges to explore, okay? Next, we want to define the metric. So here, let's say I want to optimize for the maximum area under curve on my uh, validation data set. Okay, and this is a built-in metric because, uh, because, Sage, uh, because here I'm using a built-in algo, okay? I want to maximize this value, okay? And then I put everything together, together so hyperparameter tuner uh, with the, the estimator, the metric, and the ranges I want to explore, uh, the objective, right? All that stuff comes from here. And I'm going to run 40 jobs, four by four, okay? So for best results, uh, you should actually disable parallelism because you will get more opportunities to apply optimization but if you want to speed things up a bit then you can run some parallelism so here i will still get you know uh, uh, nine shots at optimizing okay the first four will be random picked uh, randomly picked and then uh, the 36 next ones will be optimized so um, i'm gonna get plenty of chances to explore so that that should be fine and then i call fit to uh to train okay so my job fires up and I could see it in uh, in the SageMaker console here. So it's it's already over, but okay, you would see it here, right? This is the one. So I see all my jobs and uh, and the best training jobs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, and you can also use the experiment, uh, the SageMaker experiment SDK, to um, to look at those jobs. Okay, so SageMaker experiments is uh, one of those capabilities that was launched at. Uh, at reInvent, and uh, and you can very easily query um, the results even while the job is running, um, and extract information in the pandas data frame and then visualize it like that. Okay, so here I'm gonna see probably 40 jobs because I run this at the end. Okay, uh, but again, you can run this while the job is running and keep an eye on what's going on. If you use SageMaker Studio, you can visualize those. You can have all the all the nice graphs as well, okay? So once the job is over, I say, hey, just give me the top three jobs. Uh, so sorted by um, descending objective. So um, so the top job achieved 0.951284 area under curve. Okay, that's not too bad. And let's deploy it. So the only thing I have to do is call deploy on the tuner and um, so it will print out the training law for that job. I can see I saved 66.7% uh, on my training job thanks to spot instances. So uh, spot is really, really a good way to save a lot of money. So make sure you use it. And after a few minutes, the model is deployed and I can just predict with it. Okay, so uh, I can load some uh, data from my test set, uh, read the, let's say the first 100 samples, and use the invoke endpoint API in the SageMaker SDK uh, to basically push those 100 samples to my uh, endpoint and get some results, right? And read the 100 results for those 100 predictions, okay? And then I can delete my endpoint, all right, if I'm done. So here's a quick example of, uh, of running hyperparameter tuning with uh, with SageMaker, okay? So some tips. Um, mentioned it before, but uh, Bayesian is really the way to go. 
um, you know, better, faster, cheaper. Uh, random search is good as a baseline, but uh, Bayesian will work better. Don't run too many jobs in parallel because uh, you get fewer opportunities to predict, right? Um, the more data points you have, the better job um, um, Bayesian will do, right? So uh, don't paralyze too much. And you may have instance limits anyway, so you're not going to be able to fire up, uh, you know, too many instances in parallel. Um, don't run too many jobs either. Uh, Bayesian is uh, typically uh, 10x uh, more efficient than random. So, uh, so if you were used to running maybe 500 jobs with random search, uh, you should definitely consider maybe running 50 with Bayesian. And, uh, and of course, the cost of training and the cost of running those jobs might not be worth it. So you need to uh, be careful of diminishing returns. Um, if you end up running hundreds of jobs to, uh, for negligible accuracy gains, um, and negligible meaning you don't see any business impact, well then, uh, you know, it's a waste of time and money, so don't do that, okay? Um, we have plenty of resources on automatic model tuning, so of course documentation, plenty of notebooks, some really, really great blog posts. Um, so again, you'll get the slides and you can uh, go and learn even more. Now let's switch to the second part of the presentation, uh, which is um, building models automatically with SageMaker Autopilot. Okay, so Autopilot is an AutoML um, capability. So the purpose of AutoML is to solve model building completely. So um, identifying the type of problem you're trying to solve. Are you trying to build a regression model? Are you trying to build a classification model? Um, then based on this, select the best algorithm or al algorithm candidates for, for that problem. Okay, so um, which algo should you consider? Uh, and, uh, and which algos would work best with the data set that you have. The third step is pre-processing the data for the candidate algos that, uh, that were uh, selected. Okay, um, of course, you know, data, we saw it in the previous example, is not always in the perfect format. You have you know, text strings and categorical variables and placeholder values and you know, missing values maybe. So all that stuff need to be, uh, needs to be handled correctly if you want to have good results. And finally, you're going to train all those different jobs, apply the candidate algos to the, uh, to the data sets, uh, to the process data sets, and you're going to apply hyperparameter tuning, just like we saw before, to extract every bit of accuracy, okay? So these are the different steps you, you want to have in an AutoML uh, capability. Um, you'll find two types of, uh, of uh, services out there. Um, black box versus white box. So black box will train and give you the model, but they give you uh, little or even no information on how the model was built. So it's difficult to understand where that comes from. Even if it performs very well, uh, you know, you can't really reproduce it, reproduce it yourself. So, uh, so you know, that's okay. But uh, I guess white box is uh, more desirable because if you want, um, if you get a high performance model, and you understand how it was built and you're able to reproduce everything yourself and tweak even further, well, I guess that's better, right? So um, SageMaker Autopilot is white box AutoML. It will cover all the four steps that I mentioned, problem, ident problem identification, algo selection, data preprocessing, hyperparameter tuning, and it's going to show you what it did, okay? and uh, and it's going to actually generate notebooks that show you exactly what was done and you can run them again, okay? Um, SageMaker Autopilot was launched at reInvent a few months ago. For now, it supports regression and classification problems uh, using built-in algos on SageMaker. Uh, the workflow is very simple. You upload your unprocessed data set to S3 Okay, and the keyword here is unprocessed. <laughs> You'll see what that means. You configure the AutoML job. Okay, where's the data and uh, how much tuning to run pretty much. You launch the job. Okay, and it's gonna run for a while. And while it runs, you'll be able to read those auto-generated notebooks showing you the candidates, 
showing you the pre-processing steps. And then at the end, you can simply deploy your model uh, to a real-time endpoint or for a batch transform. Okay, so this is really, really simple to use. And uh, let's do a quick demo. Okay, so I'm using the same data set here. Again, um, the, that notebook is in uh, the same repo. Uh, it starts the same, right? Install the SDK, grab the data set, load it in pandas, take a look, blah, 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 blah. Okay, nothing new here, so let's go fast. Uh, here I'm splitting the data set. And um, the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to save 5% uh, of the data set to score uh, the model myself, okay? Um, you don't have to do that. Uh, it's just, you know, I wanted to show you how to do it, but uh, you could very well pass 100% of the data to SageMaker Autopilot. SageMaker Autopilot, it will internally split your training set for training and validation, etc. So, of course, it is applying those best practices, but, um, you know, I just wanted to have 5% of that data for me. Okay, and uh, that's it. And I upload that 95% uh, training slash validation data to S3. Um, as you saw, I did not modify anything here, okay? I just passed the, the raw data, no one-hot encoding, no filtering, no nothing, okay? So just makes my life simpler. And then I set up the autopilot job Okay, so I use the AutoML object from the SDK, pass a role. Uh, this is really important. I point SageMaker Autopilot at the target attribute I want to predict. Okay, so remember in the data set, we had this Y column at the end. Okay, here that says, you know, yes or no, um, did the customer accept the offer? So this is the target we want to learn. Okay. So all you have to do is tell SageMaker, hey, this is the attribute you need to focus on, okay? Uh, then where to save uh, models, notebooks, etc., etc. How many tuning jobs you want to run? Uh, so default is 500 jobs, okay? And that's going to take a few hours. So to make my demo run a little faster, I uh, reduce this to 200. But you know, I would recommend running all of it, right? If you, it will just give uh, SageMaker more opportunities to optimize and uh, and build uh, even better models. Um, I can give a max running time per training job, and I can also cap the total AutoML job to uh, to a certain amount of time. So here, it's going to be an hour. Okay, so the job will run until we tuned 200 candidates, or until we ran for an hour. Okay whichever uh, is a hit first. Okay, and that's all there is to it. And now we call fit. Okay, passing the location of the input data. And off it goes, okay? And um, it's gonna go through um, three stages, okay? So the first one is data analysis, okay? And we can see it here, okay? So here I'm basically looping, I'm describing the AutoML job and I'm looping on its status, okay? So here it's gonna loop until analyzing data is over. So analyzing data is exactly what the name means. Uh, Autopilot will look at the, um, um, the data set that you passed, the target attribute that you define. It's going to figure out um, what kind of problem you're solving here. So it's gonna figure out this is a binary classification model it's going to compute statistics on the data set and based on that, it's going to um, decide which uh, data pre-processing to apply. Okay, so this is manual, typically manual work that a data scientist would do and here it's completely automated. Okay, okay so once the uh, data analysis step is over, um, SageMaker has generated notebooks, uh, one notebook called Data Exploration that uh, gives you statistics on the data set and the other one called candidate definition that uh, lists the pipelines that have been designed by autopilot. So a pipeline is a combination of a pre-processing step and um, a training step, okay? 
And so you'll see the actual algos that have been selected. Uh, you can run that code, you can tweak. And this is really the white box AutoML part of Autopilot. Everything that Autopilot uh, does is visible in those notebooks. Okay, so they're available in S3. You can copy them to your local machine and uh, and you can go and uh, and open them, right? And I probably see them here, right? So this is the uh, candidate and the data exploration notebook, okay? So I'm not gonna go through them in the interest of time, but as you can see, you can see all those pipeline definitions here, okay? All right, um, and then Autopilot moves on to um, feature engineering, okay, as you can see here. And so here, based on the pipelines that have been defined, Autopilot will transform the data, uh, your, your input data set, according to the pre-processing steps, and it's going to store everything in S3. So uh, if I have 10 pipelines, that, that means I have 10 uh, processed input data sets in S3, okay? And finally, uh, once, once feature engineering is complete, then Autopilot will launch model tuning. So for each of the 10 pipelines uh, and, uh, and, and trained on the process data set, it's going to launch a large number of tuning jobs, um, trying to extract maximum accuracy for the uh, for the different candidates okay and this part is going to last for a while depending on how many tuning jobs you want to run okay uh, and and then okay once again uh, you could use uh, SageMaker experiments while the tuning job is running um, to look at ongoing jobs and look at the top ones etc if you use SageMaker Studio Again, you can see that stuff in studio. You can visualize it as well. Build all those nice graphs. Okay. And well, model tuning does last for a while. And then uh, it stops uh, because here probably I hit my one hour limit. Okay. Uh, so I could check in the console actually. Uh, yeah, so we only ran a hundred and uh, oh no, we only ran ninety-seven jobs. See, so uh, I I asked it to run two hundred max, but it only ran uh, ninety-seven because it probably hit that one-hour limit. Okay. All right, and uh, now I, if I want to deploy the top job, then again I simply call deploy on my uh, AutoML object, and um, I can build a predictor, real-time predictor from that. Okay. And of course, then I can predict with it. Okay. So here I'm using the predict API from the SageMaker SDK. And I can do that because I am using that uh, predictor object above. And I'm sending my test set. So the 5% uh, data that I uh, kept on the side is used here to, uh, uh, compute additional metrics. So I'm predicting all those test samples and then I'm checking if they're true positives, false positives, uh, true negatives, false negatives. Okay, keeping track of everything, comparing predictions and uh, labels. All right, and that gives me uh, a homemade confusion matrix. So I can see, uh, you know, 71 uh, false. Uh, so these are false positives and 99 false negatives. And I can compute accuracy, precision, recall, F1, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So just a, just an easy way to do that. And yeah, finally you can delete everything. And um, it's not just deleting the endpoints. We have quite a bit of stuff in S3 by now. We have all those... Uh, um, temporary data sets, etc. So uh, you might want to clean that up as well, okay, in, uh, in your uh, S3 bucket. Okay, so this is how you use Autopilot. Pretty easy, I think. Okay, plenty of resources on uh, Autopilot as well. Uh, docs, plenty of nice notebooks, uh, some, some blog posts. 
and uh, this is the end of the of the session so thank you very much for listening if you want more content from me then um, well this is uh, all of it I guess uh, blog posts on the AWS blog uh, my own blog on medium my youtube channel with tons of stage trigger videos uh, I have a podcast as well in uh, audio and video on uh, on YouTube and uh, Buzzsprout. And of course, uh, you can always ping me on Twitter, ask me questions, share cool stuff that you built. Uh, it's always a pleasure. Okay. All right. That's it for this session. I hope you learned a few things. If you have questions, please ask all your questions. We're ready to answer them now. And uh, thank you very much.